Well, drop the remote, you found the right show. Welcome to Tech Garage, presented by rockauto.com. Well, we got our plum crazy challenger in the shop and 40,000 miles, Brian, a little scary. I got me a grumbling up front, not good. That is not good. A Hemi's making a ton of power, and I gotta tell you, there's a lot of things that could go wrong here. Just verifying, no other symptoms, right? You know, no check engine light, gauges are all fine, nothing, I mean, just a noise. Our logical next step is that serpentine belt path. A lot of pulleys are spinning in that path. Let's hope that we can track this guy down. Yeah, you know, we've used this before, our stethoscope. I mean, don't worry, I'm not a doctor. I just play one on Tech Garage, but here's the deal. We got our chief tech in there, which is Josh. Josh, if you guys would go ahead and start the car. Check. I'm gonna look at a flashlight as well. There's nothing off. Wow, do I cut it off? Man, I'll tell you, Brian, it's resonating. I got it somewhere in the center, but I still can't tell if it's time an issue or an accessory. Well, I'll tell you what, we got your belt tensioner pulley right there. Why don't we go ahead and release the tensioner? I'm gonna pop the belt off. Okay. And just see what we can learn. Let's see if I can get down so here in the little. Pulleys. We got the alternator right here. We got the power steering pump. Okay. We got the condenser. All right, I'll give you go a little ahead. tension. All I right. got it. I'm can gonna you? keep my hands out from under that pulley. There you go. Okay, belts off. Pop right, it off over out. there. I'm gonna slip, send it your way. Okay. The tool so this would be normally a really good next step would be to restart the engine and see if we still got the vibration because that would imply timing. That's perfect. So if the noise is still there, oh boy, I'm yeah. scared. It's in the timing system. If the noise goes away, well, it's in an accessory. So oh. we want to go. Oh, oh boy. Oh. Yep. Is your water pump, look at that. Look at that, yeah. I mean, so. that's a half inch of play. Man, that's huge, well, I'll there tell you, you what. There's there the you culprit. Go. Looks like I'm replacing a water pump. You got your work cut out for you. You know, you get started on the water pump. I'll set up a demo to show you how a coolant system actually works. Awesome, okay. Well, it looks like seven or eight bolts around the face of this water pump. That pulley is unbelievably loose. That was the growling. Again, a lot of power coming from a Hemi. I think this is a 13 millimeter. Let me grab this. I'm gonna crack a few of these loose. First thing is remove this engine coolant temperature sensor. Gently, don't break this. Get the temperature sensor wiring harness off, down out of harm's way. You wanna protect that guy during this repair. I'm gonna get these mounting bolts in the housing here cracked loose. And then I'm gonna go get a drain pan so we can appropriately capture the coolant. Start to drain this joker. We'll have to transfer this bracket as well. Of course, we'll have to get the hoses off then I'm going to rockauto.com to get our new Hemi water pump. This is going to be fun. Well, while Brian's hard at work over there, let's take a look at a coolant system. Why do we even have one? Well, your engine fires down in the cylinder, boom, you get a ginormous explosion, 1700 degrees Fahrenheit. I got to get it from the engine to the outside air. It's all about that law of thermodynamics. Well, how does it work? All starts right here in the front. You have a radiator located right here in the front. And then what happens, your radiator actually has the antifreeze in it, which travels up through the lower radiator hose over here to your water pump. Now your water pump circulates it through your block, some galleries inside of the block that goes around those cylinders so the heat will jump off. So we're super hot here, maybe 250, 230, jumping into the coolant. Then we come up here and there's a thermostat right here that keeps it in the block till it gets up to temperature. Well, once that opens, bam, it flows back up here to the radiator. It goes into the radiator and it works its way down. Now I bring in 250, 260 coolant, Outside air temperature is 80 degrees, law of thermodynamics, bam, heat jumps off. So I'm grabbing it from the engine, throwing it out the front. Now, more importantly, a couple of tips. You can run your hand down the radiator, you start feeling some cold spots, that could be a problem. You check your upper hose, make sure it's opening up. Now the cool part is, I can fire this one up. You can actually see it pumping. It's pumping through there, the coolant fan's working. This one's working great. Two words you never wanna hear when you're working inside a water pump, rattling and banging. This thing is unbelievable, John. Boy, what'd you find, Brian? Yeah, there's your grind, there's your growl right there. The bear, There's hardly any bearing left. Well, don't worry, I got one from rockauto.com right here. I had a whole selection of a bunch of water pumps. That's the beautiful Perfect. one. I went ahead and got the Gates one, but check this out. Now, let's put them side by side. Yep. Look at the difference, go ahead. Oh my goodness. <laughs> hey, you know what? That's huge. That could end up in catastrophic damage. Well, it's a huge implications, ramifications, right? Especially in a Hemi making all that power. That impeller's got a lot of work to do.
we got to get the coolant through at a certain pressure to get thermal exchange. We have to have the seals protected with the right stuff. This thing's got a big, big job, and there's no way that's going another mile down the road. No, you know, whether it overheated or not, you know, you want to replace the thermostat, but this is a pretty cool configuration. You got the pump, you got the pulleys, everything built in. They're getting bigger and bigger, but you remember the old school ones. Oh, yeah. If you want to look at a water pump here, you can actually see it. The impeller's right there. It spins. That's what's moving the coolant around the block and in and out. You got a seal in the front and the back. Remember the weep hole? Well, yep. you can pressure test your system. Check that weep hole. Check it for leaks. Eventually, it's going to wear out. No problem. That's good. Just replace it. Now, on the other ones, you remember these as well. This is a front wheel drive one right here. Sure. This is, yeah, a little short one with the impeller here. Belt driven by the pulley right there. It spins. And this one's cool. You remember this one? Oh, yeah. Cam driven. That's right. Gear driven. The old LT ones, man. I love these things. And what's so cool about that, if you look right here, it's actually camshaft driven from the front. Gosh, used to have a bleeder up here. You'd open up, drop on the OptiSpark. The car wouldn't start. But hey, you had a cool water it pump. Was awesome. Yeah, you yeah. remember those days. Yep. You took this one off a of tech garage. I think so. Back in that? the day, I might have had hair back then. Yeah, right? Mm -hmm. This is cool because look it, it was pumping, it was working great, yep. everything was going, but no flow. Yeah. No flow, no yep. leaks. Why? Well, when you took it off, look at the impeller. There are none. Yeah. That's yeah. the importance of coolant. Coolant. I don't think that guy ever changed the coolant in that engine. I mean, I look at the corrosion's unbelievable. Metal is gone. Unbelievable, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Coolant. How important is that, man? Tell Critical. us about that. Wow. Absolutely. There's so much going on here these days. You mentioned the seals just a minute ago. The thermal dynamics is one thing. The chemical composition of the coolant is a whole nother piece of engineering that goes into it nowadays. Yep. You got to get flow, you got to get lubricity, and you can't break the seals. Boy, and there's so much. I mean, we got a cool collage here of all different coolants, yeah. but there's Asian, there's European, there's import, there's long life, 50 50 mix. You know, we have the coolant here, and then we have some test strips. They're Love those. Super important to test it so it don't end up like. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah this. that guy right there. Yeah. So that's absolutely huge. Now, yeah. check your service manual, look at the coolant, what's proper for your vehicle. Don't get any of that fly-by-night stuff. Get the proper coolant. That's huge, okay? Absolutely. So you got a big job to do, but hold on before you go. I got you something since these drinks kind of look like a tiki bar there. I got our little drink, so we'll You know, throw. I still have nightmares from the time I saw you in that grass skirt. Now it's right. Yeah. Oh, wow. I'm getting to work, buddy. Hey, hey, man. I want it smoking hot like my wife. I met her at a wow. tiki bar. But you don't want that on a car. You don't want it to get smoking hot. And that's my last thing right here. We're talking about a time and belt that's actually driving the water pump. This is huge. Check this out, folks. Down here, you have a harmonic balancer here, the crankshaft pulleys, pulling it up to the camshaft. And what happens is it comes around here, it drives the water pump. Well, if you worked on cars ever, you know how hard it is to change a time and belt. You have to go all the way to the front of the car. You might as well do the water pump at the same time. And at rockauto.com, you get the whole kit here, important. It's a kit. Check it out. You got the water pump right here driven with the pulleys. You flip it over, you can see the impeller right there. Now that's riding in the time and belt system. You got the bearings, you got different pulleys, everything associated with the system in one kit. Why do the job twice? Not only that, if this water pump leaks and it gets on the belts, antifreeze, water pumps, coolants don't get along. That belt right there will slip. And if it slips and it's an interference engine like today are, that's catastrophic damage. So make sure you replace it as a whole system. 